The adage, you should write what you know, has been the formula of success for Jay Kuo, a former trial attorney whose second career as a producer, composer, and lyricist is taking off after his musical, Insignificant Others, played to sold-out audiences in three theatrical runs and received critical acclaim. Well, this musical is actually a collection of stories of my friends um, that were told to me over time, over the years, and I started piecing them together into a coherent storyline. Some really funny stuff, some really outrageous stuff. Um, there was a running joke in my circle of friends that, that don't tell Jay anything because it might wind up in his musical ones. I saw a lot of potential for a show that really moved and danced. A lot of the stories were very dramatic and this show should have a little bit more um, comedic value because even the most painful things in life have a funny side or there's a comical way to look at them. I looked at the story he was trying to tell and found maybe some places where I thought that he had some things that kind of diverted from that story. And we worked on sort of excising those things and sort of streamlining what the story was. And I think what a, a playwright needs is someone to sort of say, okay, that's good and I think you can do better with this section. Come back to me with what you're trying to do here, I understand, now come back to me, best yourself on this. And I think Jay and I work really well together that way. Sarah Kathleen Farrell plays the role of the buxom Margaret, loved by many gay friends, but cannot find a boyfriend on her own in San Francisco. Uh, and not only is she a triple threat, a singer, actor, dancer, she's also just infused with so much energy and buoyancy and, and happiness. She, she really gets into the part and I think she was born to play this part because she's got this nur nurturing sort of personality that, that we need to see in Margaret. Uh, and, and she finds joy in, in the process and the relationship she's forming with the people here in the cast, much like Margaret does in the show. And so it's, it's fabulous. I play Margaret, who is, one might say, the central character of the show in that she is the sort of mother hen figure who embraces the other four friends that make up this, this core of, of friends in the show. She's a gal from Ohio and she's um, got two gay best friends and two girlfriends who, who move out with her to San Francisco. And so um, they arrive in the Castro, and the first thing she notices is that she, knows she no longer feels like the big fat girl um, anymore. Now all of a sudden she's a beautiful diva. The problem is the only people she ever meets are gay men, and so her dating life takes a serious nosedive. Uh, that is remedied one day when she meets CJ in a yoga class. She assumes CJ is gay because they go for a salad and they talk about their yoga class and it turns out CJ is actually heterosexual. And so thus begins Margaret's great ad adventure. The one thing that's wrong is that, that she finds out later is that CJ is actually still a woman that's transitioning to being a man. Again, a very San Francisco story. Margaret, who thinks that she's ready for a lot of this when she moves out to the West Coast, is actually still shocked by it. She's, Margaret sings a song about plumbing, where she's waiting, you know, talking about, you know, will I be able to wait for CJ to fix his plumbing down there? This show is, a, is sort of a love letter about to and about San Francisco, um, about coming to a city like this, which is open and friendly and exciting and uh, and and quirky, and uh, and just 
smiling at the memory of having done that themselves. Most people who, who are in San Francisco are transplants and they remember that when they first arrived here and the friends that they had and continue to have the excitement of arriving in a place like the Castro for the first time as a young person. That sense of joy about being in San Francisco and also kind of that that sense of what it's like to be young and in love. I, a friend of mine had said um, after seeing the show in a really positive way he said you know I forgot how much psychic space was taken up in my 20s with that whole the whole romance thing it, it's a it's a unique time in people's lives when they first sort of come of age the thing that i want the audience to take from the show is that even though um, tragic things can happen in your life um, there is a funny way to look at it there's um, you don't have to wallow in grief even the the most tragic circumstances in your life um, can have a silver lining or it can be viewed at in a way that can make you smile. We become overwhelmed by all of our you know daily demands and by individual goals and you know career goals and you know our lives are so busy and when we break it down the things that really matter in the end are the relationships the people that we share our lives with and not necessarily these tasks, these demands that weigh down on us so heavily. Um, and I think that Insignificant Others is a reminder of how beautiful those friendships can be. The, the heartbreak that comes as a 20 year old, when 20 something, when, when, you're, when you find yourself falling for somebody like your best friend or like a coworker, um, the, the, the notion of changing as a person. Um, those are the sorts of stories I think that I want people to, to see in the show, to think back on and say, yeah, you know, I know that person or I was that person. And, and to feel really good at the end of the show about, about all of the journeys that these characters had and, and what they share with the audience. Insignificant Others is playing every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at Theater 39 at Pier 39. For ticket sales, call 415-433-3939 or point your web browsers to isomusical.com. <laughs>